Hey, it's Jeff Green with Green Financial Group. Thanks for tuning in the video blog today. Today is part two of our three-part series with uh, my interview with Brian Westbury. Stick around. Be right back. We are closer to what I would call state-run capitalism today than we have ever been in the history of the right. United States. They're building chip plants, for example, right. and, and windmill farms. Would and, you are, but chip plants, I think, are kind of necessary. I totally I mean, agree. We got, they're, they're all in China, right? Or in Taiwan is our, right. like our, our last one. And yep. then, you know, we kind of need something here. I, I totally agree with that. Here's, here's my argument against it. And this is, is that you can't beat China by being like China. Correct. And, and so what I'd rather do is cut tax rates, mm -hmm on Intel and right. AMD and, you know, I'm not actually cut it on all com companies right. and then have them invest their money because the real problem is they fell behind. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had raised taxes too much. We put regulation. To, I mean, try building, you know, I think one of the things about the CHIPS Act is they said, oh, don't worry about any of the environmental stuff. If there's a horned frog, <laughs> right. like in the in where you want to build that plant, we're, we're going to ignore it, right. and and you can it's shovel ready, in other mm. words, and um and so, but in the end, we're trying to beat China by being like China instead of beating China by being more capitalist, right. and that's what worries me. Yeah. So you're absolutely yeah. right about we need chips. Yeah, and but, and you're talking about tax rates. Isn't the funny thing about tax rates the lower the tax rates become typically the higher the tax receipts for the yeah, government get, yeah. right? There's less incentive for us to avoid taxes. We don't, right. we don't all look for ways to, to avoid it. So Yeah, there's a perfect tax rate. If you go to zero, you yeah, get zero. Right. If you go if you go to a hundred, you get zero. Right, right? yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And like if I'm if you're taxed hundred percent, you're not working, all right? Yeah. Um, because you get nothing for it. So there's somewhere in between that's right, and I um, I believe today we're higher than we should be. That we, if we did reduce tax rates, we'd get more yeah, revenue. I, I kind of agree with you, yeah. um, but I agree with you a lot because I think you're a smart guy. <laughs> um, uh, so we, you, and many many others were calling for a recession in twenty three, yep. right? Didn't happen. Yep. Um, and you know, uh, t talk us about just when you get this award, this great award of the, being the best forecaster ever, and now you got one wrong. Yep. The, you know, the life of an economist, uh, you know, changes quickly. Yep. But I, a lot of people got that wrong. Yep. And uh, it was how, how, where did, what did we not see, or what did you not see, or what, how, how did we not have a recession in 20? Because I certainly thought one was coming. I would yeah. tout to my clients, look, I think we got a recession coming. Yeah. Uh, I still think we have one coming. We're going to have to pay this piper. But talk to us about the, the, the uh, what you see in recession, why we didn't have in 23, what you think of 24, uh, yeah. and where that may go. Yeah, we've kind of, uh, What's great about our conversation so far is we've kind of skipped along the top of all those moguls yeah. <laughs> um, uh, already. And so what I felt like was the morphine was going to wear off. Milton Friedman is who really talked about the money supply and the Fed and the role the Fed has in the economy. And if, if the Fed prints a dollar more of money, you end up with a dollar more of spending. Right. Well, during COVID, they printed 5.4 trillion more dollars. And, and then our, if you want to kind of count total spending, um, you use GDP. It's, it's the kind of the best measure we have. And so the Fed printed 5.4 trillion. GDP was only up 4.9 trillion, which means we still had 500 billion to spend. Okay. So they had pushed money in so fast, the morphine, right. they put so much morphine in it that it hadn't worn completely off. And okay. I, that's, I, I, I didn't come to that realization um, until later on in this year, because if you look at the money supply growth, it's negative. It should have had an impact, but guess what? It, they had just pumped it in so fast, we weren't, our body wasn't able to absorb all the morphine it, right. it, to keep the analogy going. The second thing is that they had doubled the deficit this year. We went from one trillion of a deficit in 2022 to a two trillion deficit in 2023. And that was the CHIPS Act, the Inflation Reduction Act. And never in my wildest dreams did I think we were we were gonna be able to spend that much. You know, one of the things that they did is that they put a part of part of the the budget was fifty billion dollars of aid to kind of Green New Deal projects. But they 
they created these rules to let you apply for that, which actually made it go to 250 billion. Mm -hmm. So, so companies and people were able to get 200 billion more stimulus out of the government because of the way they wrote them. So every, all the forecasts of how much we would spend were off. Um, because I, and I, you know, I don't, I'm not, first of all, even Congress doesn't read these laws. Right. But, and I don't even know if I would have known if, what I read, but, but somehow they left it open-ended and nobody caught it because all the, the people, all the economists in Washington who they, they call it scoring, mm -hmm. they, like how much is this bill right. going to cost? And they said 50 billion, well, it ended up being 250 billion. So that's 200 billion of that extra trillion dollar deficit. So, so I think there's two things. We hadn't spent all the money yet um, that the Fed had printed. So that was still kind of going through. And they were somehow able to and sneak more morphine in. Okay. And so, you know, we we're a little addicted. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Yeah. And you hit the button. And it's like, you know, I, I'm, I've had surgery, so I know about right. the button. Um, you hit the button and get a little more morphine. And um, but this year, we've now spent all the money that the Fed printed, mm -hmm. and the deficit is going to be smaller this year. Right. Um, and as a result, I think this. I mean, I, I keep believing in that basic theory that I have right. that we have to pay a price for COVID and the lockdowns. Yeah. I think it comes this year. What kind of severity do you see? In yeah, that? it's small. We Our forecast is a recession minus, yeah. minus 0.4%. Okay. So if, if you, <laughs> okay. that's annualized, right, like yes. I started out, right. so it's 0.1% a quarter. Yeah. Not that it won't be right. perfect like that. So we're not, so in your opinion, we're not going to revisit 08 or no. anything like that. No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. First, uh, one thing to think about, um, and individuals really care about this, is uh, housing, housing is nowhere near, we haven't built enough houses in since 2007. Yeah. And so housing and house prices, I think, are permanently higher because of all the money printing. Um, we still have a shortage of housing. So this is, I mean, housing is, it's not 08. Uh, what people do worry about is commercial real estate, especially in the mm -hmm. big blue cities, Chicago, New right. York, or San Francisco. Um, they, they're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. And banks that have loans to those uh, projects right. that, that are, or buildings, they're, they're going to lose money.